Hello, hello. Let me plug in my good microphone. Hi. <laughs> I feel like it's been so long. Um, sorry, a friend of mine sent me some pictures that I just wanted to check out really quick of their baby. Wow, lots of pictures. <laughs> I have to look at, oh my goodness, little pumpkin. Um, I know this is weird, but I just realized that I keep forgetting to look at just responding with a little heart and love. Okay. Um, <laughs> surprise. So yeah, I've been guided this week to, to come on live and, um, <clears throat> for a couple reasons, um, I, I had taken a break. I was doing lives every week. Oh, by the way, in case you didn't know or, or don't know me or haven't seen my videos lately, um, since we got our two dogs, Minerva and Baxter, you will always hear them in the background doing something or another. <laughs> so if you hear weird noises going on and you can't see what's going on like that, um, she just dropped her toy. But anyway, that's it's just my dogs. Um, Minerva and Baxter. Twin, twins. <laughs> They're siblings and they are half Boston Terrier and half Beagle. Um, yes, we've had Boston Terriers in the past, but these guys are different. <laughs> I love them. Um, so, okay. So, oh yes. So I had been taking a break and I think that really that was because um, the seeds were being planted and the energies were being created for the money miracle, which is the year long immersion, magical money journey that we're, we're moving into. And the people that are already there playing with us, we are doing the prep work for the money miracle year long immersion to come. And um, it's amazing. And anyway, so yeah, that was being sort of um, birthed through me. And um, I was just sort of in a cocoon stage and not really um, sharing tons um, outward, or at least not video wise. So <laughs> here I am now, though. Um, You'll have to pardon me too. I was just taking the dogs out and there's something floating around in the air that's making my nose itchy. Um, so yeah, so it, it, you know, when I really felt it, so I was guided to come live this week um, and to do it today specifically. And when I sort of felt into what wanted to be shared, <laughs> one of the things was sort of the story of my own sort of magical story of how I erupted <laughs> into who and what I am. Um, well, in this lifetime anyway, or we'll probably go back many lifetimes, but um, because I realized that a lot of you don't necessarily know me in so far as, you know, knowing my, my full backstory. And I'll try not to make it too long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, really though, um, and and then sort of bring it up into wrapping it up in a ribbon with talking about the money miracle and and all of the energies that are happening since I started putting it out there to you guys, my magical witchy healer tribe people. Um, so. On June 8th, 1970, <laughs> nine, uh, nine months or so after I had chosen my parents, I was born in, into the Chicagoland place. Um, and from, for as long as I can remember having thoughts and feelings, I always felt magic. Um, you know, and it was, I was thinking about it earlier and the phrase, 
magic that can't be seen with the naked eye or whatever. And then I thought, well, but eyes are magic. Seeing is magic, <laughs> you know, <laughs> whether you're seeing in 1D, 2D, 3D, 12D, um, which I do, um, and all, all everything in between, it's all magic, right? And there's nothing that's not magic. Um, but that having been said, um, you know, I just would, I just always could sense um, otherworldly things. And um, luckily I attracted an extremely magical group of friends, um, pretty much from kindergarten through eighth grade, who were very much the same in the, in the magical sense of the word and world. <laughs> Baxter, what are you doing, bud? Come lay down, buddy. Come lay down. Um, yeah, so I think I remembered, the first time I remembered a past life, I was like seven years old or eight, maybe eight. Um, and, and it didn't seem weird to me at all. You know, it was just like, oh, cool. <laughs> and then um, with a, one of my still one of my best friends in the whole world, who I met in kindergarten. We met by bumping heads. So we always say we like exchanged soul parts and um, and we were both born in June of 1970 um, and both of our moms are Aries. And we discovered this all while sitting on the bench in the office with ice packs on the, bu on the bumps on our heads. <laughs> so like there was this magical, you know, kindred spirit quality. And, and, and we've always been psychic with each other or doing the same thing at the same exact time, or turning to each other and saying the same exact thing at the same same exact time, um, or, you know, and that kind of thing. Uh, even, like, even mirroring physical movements, <laughs> like, not meaning to. <laughs> it's really interesting. So, I mean, having that experience with, you know, a, such a close friend since, since 1975 and up till 2023, like, I would call that a magical, a magical thing in this world um, and in other worlds um, but yeah like I and I, I realized like probably when I was about 14 or so maybe even earlier than that that I, I would fall into these almost like a trance like a like a meditative state where like I, we had record players you know in those days as well as cassette players um, and I would watch the record spin around and around and it would put me into this sort of like hypnotic trance where I could ju it was just this feeling of like limitlessness you know sort of like the cosmos you know was in me and everywhere and <laughs> like that kind of thing and um and so fast forward to oh probably I would say like the end of 1993 or so um, and I wasn't feeling myself at all. I was feeling really weird and bad and dragged down and bogged down and I was in grad school at the time at Northern Illinois University and there was a, at that time, there was a little tiny ma and pa health food store um, that I would go to to get like organic peanut butter and you know multigrain bread and whatever, whatever I needed and um, and other probably yummy snack things like sesame sticks. <laughs> I don't know what made me think of those. I, I love those, um, not the sweetened kind, but the really savory kind. Um, but um, anyway, so this and super super sweet nice couple owned it. You know, a little bit hippie ish and. Um, they were probably in around 40, early 40s, I would think, you know, and I was 23 and, um, and they were just, maybe, I don't know, it, it, it's hard to kind of say, but um, at some point everyone feels like the same age, but, <laughs> but I went there to, to pick something up and they asked me how I was doing because I, you know, we knew each other at that point and, and I said, you know, guys, I'm feeling really weird and I kind of told them this funk that I was in and 
And um, I think it was the husband who said, you know, have you ever heard of the Bach flower remedies? I said, no, you know, that sounds kind of neat. What is it? And he said, well, they're here. And he just handed me this, like a questionnaire pamphlet. He said, they're, they're, they're sort of like homeopathic, but it's, it's flowers. It's the energy of flowers instead of a bunch of other ingredients, but it's, you know, it doesn't affect you on a physical level. It helps like emotional and spiritual and mental things. And I was like, wow, cool. And so he said this, take the questionnaire and it'll match you to the flower essence that you need. So I did and I, and it matched me to one. And I said, well, I mean, it's worth a shot. I don't want to feel bad anymore. So <laughs> if this will help me, then great. So I, I bought the remedy and um, I followed the directions. And literally within two days, I felt totally normal again, happy, light, you know, that whatever icky feeling that I had had was was gone. And I, so I thought, well, I want to try more of these. Let's see what else I need. So I, that was the beginning of like my flower essence journey. And fast forward to 2004, I ended up becoming certified, a certified flower essence practitioner. Okay, but back to, so that was t 1993. Um, and, um, within a year I start, I had started helping loved ones with flower essence saying essences saying like, well, you need that one and you need that one. And they would start taking it and, and, you know, get better and better. But I, it was like, I could sense what they needed and match them up with the right ones. Even back then, even before fast forward and certification and blah, blah, blah. So it was like just this innate, this innate healer energy in me that, like I knew I was psychic, I knew I could sense magic, I knew all of that, um, but I, I, I didn't really think about I'm a healer, you know, like in in any sort of concrete way, it didn't occur to me. And um, even though the other thing that's interesting, I'm kind of putting pieces together now. Um, I. I do remember I used to love giving back massages and it and I wasn't like certified or at all and but I but people would come to me and say can you do my back you know because I my just in little what's the word intuitively knew where their knots were what they needed and um and yeah it was it was like my hands knew what to do and I was like okay <laughs> cool and um and so yeah, there was there's that. I, it didn't even I didn't didn't put two and two together there, but that that was another piece of it. Um and but by night I keep wanting to say 2004, but no, this was even this was 10 years prior to that. By 1994 I was starting to sort of wane in the grad school <laughs> end of things like it just wasn't appealing much anymore. I kept kind of going to teachers and saying, you know, I, I, I didn't finish the thesis. Can I get an incomplete in the class and finish it over the summer, blah, blah, blah. You know, and it just was like that part of me was like, wah, wah. and I started like um, doing more. I was an art minor, an English major, major and an art minor. And I started doing these spontaneous self portraits every day. And I had a friend at the time and we would sit on the floor of my living room with all the oil pastels and the chalk pastels and, and just do self portraits, like very like, um, like art therapy kind of thing, you know, and I, and I, I was always writing, I was always a poet, but I started writing every day. I started going to this, um, there was a Mexican restaurant in, in DeKalb where I was going to school where I was living. Um, and I think it was called, I think it was called Eduardo's, not like the pizza place in Chicago, but I, in, I don't even know if it's there anymore. I don't think so. But, um, and they had like a bar in the basement called the Flamingo Lounge where they always had free chips and salsa, a really good salsa, <laughs> plus a popcorn machine. So I would go by myself and, and, you know, I would always have a pen with me and I would eat their free chips and salsa and I would take a pile of napkins and I would just start writing stream of consciousness. And until some one day I had a pile of napkins like this thick, all written on back and front. And, and I put them together and called, called it the napkin books. 
and and I, but I was always writing. And if I was home, I had this cool little word processor that my aunt got me for for writing English papers. But I was using it for poetry. <laughs> And it, but it was so therapeutic to just be writing all the time and and um, and doing artwork every day and and then someone who was moving out of their apartment I was helping them load their car and there was a, a Yamaha guitar a acoustic guitar in his closet just sitting there I said oh cool guitar and he goes you want it I never play it somebody gave it to me um, yeah I don't need to take it with me and I was like yes so I I got the guitar and then I started writing songs every day. <laughs> like hmm you know and um and so there was like this therapy like purging therapeutic thing going on then over that summer um a friend showed up on my doorstep with um a deck of cards and a book and said this belongs to my sister but i think you'll like it you have to give it back when you're done but i want you to borrow this and it was the um, the totem medicine cards uh, that the uh, what what are the names ja David Carson and Jamie Sams I think but it's the <coughs> the original totem medicine cards oracle deck um, with the book with the description of every animal and what they help with and all of that and so I I was like ooh because <laughs> I've always been kindred spirits with animals. Um, when I was little, my family would be driving out in like rural areas and. I would see a horse and I started like just speaking this kind of sounded like speaking in tongues but it's like the horse made me do it and I was like so my dad be driving going what language is that and I was like horse language and he was like oh cool and I was like what how can you not know horse language and like it was just you know so I've always had this connection with animals so I found out my my basic totem animals and you know started learning how to do readings it was so weird like these things just kept happening and um and i had taken west african drumming a couple of years before that just cl a class or two um with this really talented musician and and then people in town started having drum circles and i was like oh i can do that you know so it was like and i started like channeling a friend of mine had bongos and i just started ch i never played bongos before but i was just channeling and playing and it was like amazing and and I looked over at my friend and I said, I've never done this before. And he goes, you're a goddess. And I was like, OK, <laughs> I don't know. It was just a really funny little moment. And I was like, maybe, maybe I'm channeling one, you know. And anyway, so magical life. And so leading up to in nine, um, moved back home in 1995, having totally lost interest in grad school, <laughs> but, but now on this new interesting artistic writing, songwriting, poetry writing. Um, path and um, and ended up being connected with an energy healer who a friend of who was a friend of a friend of my mom's if that makes sense and my and my mom's friend told her about this energy healer my mom told me and said my mom who is also very psychic not necessarily doing anything with it professionally but just naturally you know she said I think you should go see this energy healer. And I said, yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> so I went and and it was this like jolly little Buddha woman who ha had this effervescent bubbly laughter. And I love her so much. And she was awesome. And she was, you know, working on my energy field. And I remember like waking up an hour later going, so when when's the healing happening? And she goes, we you've been here for an hour. I said, I was like not even here while I I was gone. She goes, yeah, you were out like a light. I was like, wow. And then she's like, you know, one of your um, one of your um, spirit guides is Archangel Raphael. And I said, oh, cool. I said, I know Gabriel's one. And, and, and I'm like, wait, how do I know that? And then I remember kind of seeing him one day in high school after I was in chorus in high school. And, and I just felt Gabriel there and I was like, Gabriel, what's up? You know, and that was like, and that's how I knew that was that we were connected. I didn't know anything about the Archangels. I just knew Gabriel was there. And um, so then now my healer said, um, yeah, Archangel Raphael is one of your guides. And and um, there was someone else too, I think. I can't really remember, but, um, but yeah. And then after like the second or third session, she said to me, you know, you're a healer, right? And I said, oh that makes sense and she said 
you know, I'm teaching a healing certification course. And I said, oh, and I said, well, I, you know, I was like working part time at the library and I was, I just moved back from school and I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not, don't have a ton of funding for something like that. And she said, do you like cats? <laughs> and I said, yes. She said, okay, well, I, my teacher lives in, my healing teacher lives in Florida. So I go out of town a lot um, and I have my house and I have two cats. Would you like to do the healing certification work? in exchange for house sitting and cat sitting for me. And I said, yes. <laughs> so, so that's what we did. <laughs> so that was my first certification in energy healing. Uh, 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 1996 um, was the date of that. And I only, I didn't use it professionally um, until, you know, way later, but, um, um, but I had the tools and I worked on myself and I worked on family members when needed. Um, and, and that was really cool. Um, and I practiced on friends too, but, um, so yeah, moving into, I ended up working at this like health store, you know, non-Western health oriented store that had homeopathic remedies, herbs, tinctures, and a bazillion t different companies, flower essence companies and flower essences, because the owner of the store was a flower essence practitioner. <laughs> so I was like, my whole paycheck went to flower essences, but I learned a lot about, you know, the Alaskan essences, desert alchemy, the FES essences, the Bach, which I already knew about. Um, 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 uh, there uh, Green Hope Farms that they focus on, um, flower essences for animals, but, but people too. There's other, uh, Fox Mountain, I think is, was one. Um, God, she had so many flower essences in that shop. It was awesome. And um, I know I have a comment, but I just keep forgetting to look at it because I'm, <laughs> I'm just like on a roll here. Oh, Rach! <laughs> Hi, yay. Um, yeah, thank you for being here. And, um, I just looked over at the little clock thingy and it said 2211. Ooh, that's how long I've been talking. Longer now, but um, master numbers. Okay, so flower essence certification. And then I started my first, my first practice was a flower essence practice. And people would come to me for consultations and I'd make them their formulas, their flower essence formulas for whatever they needed and intuitively. And that was awesome. And then I was guided to start bringing in the energy healing and doing energy readings. Um, and so I started, I started incorporating that. Once I was started doing that, I decided to look up um, drum circles. Because um, by that time we were online, you could look up things online. And so I looked up drum circles and um, I found this one woman who sometimes had led drum circles, but and so I clicked on her website and the first words I saw were um, shamanic training. And I went, <coughs> I don't really know what that means, but I know I need to do that. And I just, you know, and so I, I wrote to her and, and, and anyway, she ended up being my teacher and, um, and I did the shamanic training, um, the shamanic training class and got certified in the completion of the course, which was like a four month thing, I can't remember. And then I did the practicum, which was another certification and where she was sort of the overseer of you, you as the student, you know, taking, um, doing shamanic healings for clients. And, and she was sort of, um, what's the word? Uh, not overseer, but sort of, like you would report to her what happened and, and she would talk, you know, and, and if, if she had suggestions about how to do something a little different or whatever. Anyway, so I completed that too. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of like, and that was, I com did that work over at the end of 2005, completed it in 2006. Um, and so opened my, what I called at the time, my shamanic healing and empowerment coaching practice or something like that in power. <laughs> it was called Wolf Wisdom. And Wolf was one of my first totems that I discovered 
previous, you know, 10 years before that. Um, anyway, so that's kind of the story. And, and really, very shortly after, once I opened my shamanic practice, um, I was working at another place, it's a pretty magical healing place. Um, the woman who owned it wanted me to come basically be the flower essence specialist and teach about flower essences but I had I did other stuff as well kind of the head of the like boutique or whatever and um, I didn't I didn't stay there very long but the people the other um, employees there all of whom were healers and energy workers and readers and clairvoyance and all of that um, I'm still connected with I, I would say most of them um, it's almost like we all came together because we were meant to be together. You know, we were meant to all connect. And um, um, so why was I telling you that? Oh, because <laughs> that group of people, I, I suddenly had this guidance that um, I, I was supposed to start leading prosperity circles. And I was like, oh, I don't even know what that means. But so we were talking, I was talking to a couple of them and I said, if I hold a prosperity circle, sort of class slash healing circle at my apartment um, and charge this mount and have hold it on this such and such night, would you guys come? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, OK. And so they, you know, we started telling all the other all the other energy workers there and they all came and it was like this huge circle of healers in my living room and the apartment we had at the time and um, and and that it started to become a regular thing prosper and it was oh and i think the goddess lakshmi had just during my shamanic training that's right she the the teacher was you know leading a a, a journey playing the drums and we were supposed to meet one of our spirit guides and have an exchange with them and um so lakshmi the goddess the hindu goddess of abundance and beauty came to me and i was like whoa <laughs> she was really tall and <laughs> and she and she started doing had, had these like um, long um, sort of oblong, I don't know what to call them, things. I mean, they were, they were, it wasn't like a flat thing. It was a thing, and it, but it was just light. And she started pushing them and they would just spontaneously appear in her palms and she just would push them down into my head. And I started getting this like warm, golden glow the very like i always call dreamy creamy abundance feeling in my whole body and i said what what are you doing and she said i'm giving you a prosperity healing and i said whoa cool and, and she said and now you will give other people prosperity healings and i went okay and so i think that's where yes that now that makes sense because I was like, where did the prosperity circle come from? That So it must have been a Lakshmi thing. So I brought the energy of Lakshmi. Now, I, yes, okay. <laughs> Sometimes I just need to like re-remember things, connect them back in. Um, and so that's when the whole prosperity thing started. And then I went on to just see my shamanic clients. Um, eventually I started, um, rather than seeing healing clients, I changed my whole business into um, a shamanic um, apprenticeship business where I would take on apprentices and see them twice a month and have sessions and work on, you know, teach them all the shamanic healing um, um, tools. <laughs> I'm like, what's the word? Techniques and tools and, and of course, you know, encourage them to do it in their own way that felt natural to them and um and i had them practice on me so that was kind of <laughs> hmm, a little smart business business move there <laughs> i i now have six healers that i see all the time um but so that was really fun and cool and neat and and um on that note i have a one spot for a shamanic healing apprenticeship and i do them one-on-one -on -one. i don't do it as a group um just wanted to throw that out there um it's called the two crows shamanic apprenticeship so in case anyone's interested um just can you know dm me <laughs> only one spot though not doing a lot of that 
but um, but it's a really cool. Well, yeah. If you want the info, just DM me. Anyway, um, so yeah, and 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 then event. So uh, la, 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 I'm trying to remember. At the end of 2011, I was just guided uh, to take my business totally online. Um, I had done a couple, after the apprenticeship thing, I, I moved into a different um, healing practice uh, with a partner at the time, with a business partner at the time. And then when that was over, yeah, that's when I was guided to just like go, you know, I, want, I really want to do this online. I want to reach out beyond just the area where I live and I want to help people globally. And um, so I started learning all about online business. Um, but, and then, oh, and then I was inspired to, um, well, now I know who it was that came to me. It was a spirit guide plus another spirit um, energy teacher. Um, and, and I was basically felt like I was tapped on the shoulder and I, I was like, what? And they said, you will now help spiritual entrepreneurs and business owners like yourself um, um, connect with their prosperity and abundance vibe so that they can succeed in their healing business. And I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so that's what I, I, that's what I started doing. And so I've been doing that ever since in various and sundry ways. <laughs> so anyway, that's my story for anyone who didn't know me before, um, or at least didn't know everything about my healing journey. Um, because I usually come on and talk about all the past lives and centuries as a witch and a messenger of God in those lifetimes where I was tortured and punished and banished and, and all of that jazz. Um, so, um, so, you know, it's like, you know, all about my past lives and, and really it, that's an important piece because that is why my sole purpose in this lifetime is to help support our magical, witchy, spiritual healer business tribe. Um, to, because, because of all that baggage and, and crap, <laughs> um, a lot of us came here in this lifetime, not only with the sole purpose of being a healer, but also with all the baggage of being afraid, being afraid to be seen, being afraid to speak our truth, being afraid to share our magic because we think we're going to be punished or banished or killed and all of that. So that is why I am here. It is literally my purpose to help you let go of those money blocks, let go of those visibility blocks, let go of any blocks to your own empowerment as the magical witchy healer being that you are. So that's my story, morning glory. <laughs> um, <clears throat> pretty long one, sorry. I, I just, yeah. If I, if I start telling a story, it's it's not going to be like 11 minutes, um, unless it's totally chopped up. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so so and then fast forward to November of last year, I it was again sort of instead of a tap on the shoulder this time, it felt like a knock on the door in the back of my head. And I was like, hello. And it was like you are here to channel a new energy paradigm for healers. And I was like, oh, cool. And, it, and it, I said, what is this paradigm? It is called the new prosperity. And so I said, I said, okay, you know, um, I knew that it felt right. And so I started channeling messages and sound healing codes is, is a huge, large part of, of the new prosperity work that I've been doing with, with my clients. Um, and the codes are are here to they're very high vibrational the new prosperity is from dimensions 9 10 11 and 12. Um, and this is the first time that its energy is has ever come through for the healers of earth so um it's been a pretty magical experience to be the channel of this energy and to experience it myself as it's you know as it's passing through me, it's activating me as well. And, and as I say yes to integrating it, um, the new prosperity is becoming, is, has become my new energy paradigm. And that's really what you do is that you allow it to 
you connect with it and allow it to integrate into your whole being. And it accelerates the vibration of your physical being, your energetic being, um, you know, your spirit being. And, and in, in the faster moving vibration, in the highest vibration, um, you are able to create your creations into the physical realm at a much faster rate. Um, so you want to do it, you want to do that from, from your soul and in connection with your heart so that what you're creating, what, what you're allowing to be created through you are your true heart's desires, you know, and, and that's really where the focus is on in the new prosperity. And that's where the focus is on in this new offer that's being created, that's been created is the money miracle created from the energy of the new prosperity through me. Um, and it is a year long immersion in this energy as you integrate it and just allow it to be your new normal. And I've, I mean, even at the end of last year, but more and more as I've been working with it, you know, cause now we're in, what are we in already? May, wow, November, December, January, February, March, April, May. So half a year already. Oh, <laughs> I guess it, it feels like it just sort of started happening yesterday, but it's been a while already. Um, it is, uh, you know, the more and more I allow it to integrate and allow, and you have to remember to connect with it because <laughs> if you're not used to it being your, your normalized version of yourself, you know, just like anything else, you've got to connect, you've got to remember it's like a practice oh yeah, I've got to connect with the new prosperity energy. And I teach you how to do that as well um, in, all, in all of my offerings, but in the, new, in the Money Miracle as well. Um, so you've got to remember to connect with it and, and you, know, you might have to kind of go back and redo it a couple times a day. And, and, but it starts to generate through you and through your energy field and energy systems. And, and it does, it starts to normalize and um, and you start to realize that that thing you wanted to create is already here, like, you know, and, and you, and you, it's like, you don't even know, it's like, when did that shift happen? Like, like I said, I want blah, blah, blah. And there, and, and the next, the next day or later that day, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I've always been able to do that with, um, <laughs> just a funny, a fun story. So I think, I think I've had, a partial connection with the new prosperity energy for years but I didn't know what I was connecting with but it but I on and off have often had this thing where I just think about something and then it's there in front of me um, or I write down a thing and then it comes into my life or I say out loud I just want blah 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 and then within a short period of time it comes to me it comes into my life and um, and I didn't know that that was called the new prosperity energy paradigm. I just thought, wow, I manifest things really fast, not all the time, but like when I'm being conscious about it, but but not even really meaning to manifest or or not even saying I want something without thinking. Oh, well, now that I said it out loud, it's going to come to me like I, I didn't get that far, but it came to me anyway. <laughs> like really interesting stuff. Um, I did it with our, our house that we live in. Um, beautiful house and, um, but a really fun one that I'll share. Thank you, Rachel. I don't know what was lovely, but I'm glad it was. <laughs> um, a really fun one was, is that, um, my, my partner, Rich, he volunteers at a food pantry. Um, every almost every saturday when he you know when he when he can every saturday afternoon and um every once in a while i'll think to my because and then at the end of of the day of the shift or whatever the people that volunteer there can take also take home bags of food which is really cool um but like i used to sort of jokingly write a shopping list <clears throat> and say you know here's my list if they have this there and you're able to bring it home cool if not that's fine too but but like sometimes you know i just don't i don't write any lists but i'll just think in my head we really need green peppers and 
And then suddenly every Saturday, he's bringing home like three big bags full of green peppers. And I'm like, oh my God, I just, and it, I don't, sometimes I don't even think about it in connection with him going to the food pantry. I just think, ooh, you know, like I really want mushrooms or I really, you know, I need more potatoes. And it'll just, it'll, and he'll come home with huge bags of potatoes. <laughs> like, and I don't know, it's just cool. You know, because I we don't know what they're gonna have or not have there. They're just putting together bags of food. The people come and pick them up and whatever. So, um, anyway, that's just a fun story, a fun little manifestation story. Um, yeah, the money, the money miracle. <laughs> Let's um, yeah, like okay. So I've had a lot of um memberships you know either focused on abundance or focused on su succeeding succeeding in your spiritual business from a soulful place um but i've never had a um and i've done like programs like you know created six week programs or two month programs or three day programs or whatever but i've never had a thing where it was like a group membership type thing but for a set amount of time because I would have always monthly mem memberships. You can sign up, you can stay for three months, you could stay for a year, you could leave in a month, you can whatever, you know, but this, the money miracle came through and it was like, oh no, <laughs> like this is a thing. This is an immersion. This is a year long journey. And I was like, that makes sense. That feels really grounded and really full. And, um, and the people that come in it's it's like a, a it's a it's a new prosperity energy alchemizing container um so if you guys are interested i didn't i had posted a thing like if anyone had questions i don't think anyone had questions um but you can ask me questions in the comments you can direct to message me i'm just double checking if anyone had questions i don't think so but um but yeah ask me anything about it it is the new prosperity dot world slash money miracle the new prosperity dot world slash money miracle and i will I'm trying to check for questions here do, 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 do. hello questions nope nope okay <laughs> um let me put this in the comments too the new prosperity dot world slash money miracle also soon i am going to be uploading to here to the business page i'll put it in the comments of this facebook live um, and i'll also make a separate post but i'm going to share i i created um, a money miracle sound healing code that i was just guided and inspired to gift it to you guys so that's coming sometime today um and so that's that's really it the money miracle does anything else it's like it doesn't really want it doesn't really it's if it's for you you'll feel it you'll feel it in your heart you know you'll connect to it with your soul and you and and all the information you need is on that page um yeah, it's like for me to speak English words about it right now, it's saying, no, no, just no. It's, you know, if it's for you, feel it, <laughs> take it, put it in your heart, sign up. Um, there are amazing payment plans, you know. Um, if you pay in full, there's a huge savings. So there's all these different options and it's awesome and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we're all, it, it officially starts uh, May 22nd, but we're already there doing the prep work. Um, so if you want to come play beforehand, um, we got a party going on. <laughs> okay, guys, I love you. Forty-four twenty-two. <laughs> That's how long the thing was. Bye.